friends, brothers and sisters in Christ. In today's liturgy, we get inspiration from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 8, verses 18 to 22. The Lord invites you and me, calling us to follow him. And today we reflect on the joys and challenges of following the Lord Jesus Christ. The, one of the first important thing to keep in mind about the joy is that when we follow the Lord, we already experience life here on this earth and in the world to come. In other words, we experience eternal life, life without end, life forever. We already experience the presence of God here on earth when we follow the Lord, when we allow the Lord to guide our lives and our hearts with his words, which is spirit and life. And the Lord himself wanted us, and he says he came so that we can have life and life to the full. Dear friends, do we open our hearts in order to have life to the full? In order to follow the Lord, we need to listen to Him in order to know what He is speaking to us in every situation of life. When we don't know what to say, we listen to Him and we know what to say. When we don't know what to do, we look at the Lord and He teaches us how to love, how to be kind, how to be patient, how to be welcoming towards all, how to heal others, how to be human, how to be spiritual, how to love as God loves. He teaches us his ways. As disciples, we have to look at the master. And the master will show us the good words to speak and will show us the good actions to do in every circumstance of life. So the invitation in today's readings is to follow the Lord amidst the challenges that may come. Yes, there are a lot of joys that are involved in following the Lord, but there are also crosses that are involved. But with the crosses, we will lead us to the suffering, death, and victory of the resurrection, the victory of new life with the Lord. So no matter your crosses, the Lord is victorious if we hold on to him and keep working out everything with him and walking with him, learning from him on how to face the crosses and challenges of our lives. In our journey of following the Lord, we have to ask ourselves, what motivates me in following the Lord? Knowing that following the Lord, I follow him who is everything, who is everything in my life. So what motivates me in following the Lord? Is it the love and recognition of the divinity and the powerfulness of the Lord? Oh, what motivates me is the hope of personal gain and comfort, which could be more egoistic. Do I follow the Lord because I want to have and to be like Him in everything, knowing that in being with Him, I have everything and I'm everything? Or I just follow it, follow the Lord because of my personal egoistic motives? We have to check deep in our hearts what motivates me in serving the Lord, following him, and serving our brothers, following the Lord by serving our brothers and sisters. What motivates me? One of the scribes comes to Jesus and says, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus answers him and saying, Foxes have dens and birds have their necks, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay the head. This proposal immediately says that following the Lord means following him in the joys and challenges, and every second, every time, wherever we are, in the comfort, in the discomfort, the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head means he goes everywhere doing good, being good. And in doing good, there could be challenges, there could be joys that are part of evangelization, part of following the Lord. So he reminds us, never be stuck 
in one place. Never be stuck in the only the comfort zones. Move out and follow the Lord. Just as the Lord did not have a place where he says, I'm staying here and I will not move anywhere. No, he was going everywhere in the mountains, the hills, the valleys, and everywhere, villages, towns, meeting all kinds of people, the sick, the sinners, the tax collectors, the scribes, the good, all kinds of people. This is his, it was his mission and is our mission that we should never be only satisfied to be where we are. And when we are blessed to be where we are doing good, that should move us to go and that do that same good elsewhere, just as Jesus did. He used every second, every moment to do good and to be good. May you use every moment, every second to be good and to do good just as he did without only getting stuck in one place. The Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. This statement can be understood in many ways. In the first place, dear friends, Jesus never rejects and never accepts immediately the expression of the scribe that you, I will follow you wherever you go. He's checking the motivation of the scribe. Why did the scribe say this? You know, people follow Jesus, first of all, for a genuine motive because they really want to learn and they want to be like him and they also may follow him because they want to see what they can gain from him so what is my motivation in following the lord and serving his people jesus just makes a statement that clarifies what it is involved in being his follower that this scribe was anxious to follow the Lord because he expected a great reward coming from the Lord Jesus by following him. Do I also expect material things from following the Lord? If we expect spiritual things, things of the spirit, which is about life forever, that peace, that joy in us that we share with others, then we are following the right way. But if we expect material things from the Lord, then that motivation is questionable. The scribe could see Jesus as a miracle worker and he was, he would, Jesus was seen like having a potential of being a good leader. For sure he was even more than a leader. So the scribe thought that yes, by following Jesus, I will also be one of the ministers, one of the people who will benefit from his goodness. That's why in the first place, by saying I will follow you, the scribe could have had this in mind in his heart in following the Lord. Therefore, the interior motivation of the scribe to follow Jesus wherever he went was a questionable motivation because we follow Jesus not because we want to be popular, not because we want to gain anything material from him, not because we want to be famous or to be rich in any way, but we follow the Lord in serving him and having that life and in order to share that life forever with others. Jesus' response to the scribe has two aspects. First, it clarifies and removes all the misconceptions that the scribe had in his mind and heart in following the Lord. If the, if, if the scribe wanted to follow the Lord, then he had to be prepared to follow the Lord in poverty and homelessness rather than in riches and possessions which are worldly and passing away. Riches and possessions are things that when obtained well should help us live better. Our love life, our peaceful life with our brothers and sisters, improving their dignity as people created an image and likeness of God. But the key point of this is because first of all, we have the Lord with us, which is life in us, and that leads us to use whatever is around us to reach others, especially the needy. Secondly, Jesus was simply telling the scribe, yes, come follow me, but in following me, it will not result. Following the Lord may not result in earthly riches, but in heavenly spiritual riches, which many times involve also poverty, that disposition of the heart, which involves the cross, the challenges, the pains, which prepare us to embrace heavenly on earth in, in a way that uh, even in our way of expressing our love many times has to go through crosses, through sacrifices, through challenges. Sometimes it's, it's just a smooth sailing but with an open, clear, humble heart that embraces the Lord and allow God to work through us to reach others. Whether we have 
things which have been achieved well and whether we don't have things which we have received, we use what we are and what we have to follow the Lord and to serve our brothers and sisters to journey together in order to embrace the heavenly riches. But that earthly poverty is a way that assures us that even if we have everything, we are humble and we are generous. We are open-minded, open-hearted, open-handed to share what we have so that others can be rich in spirit because of our riches. So the material riches, if we have, is a help to help to, to guide us towards the heavenly riches of the spirit. So the material riches, if we've got them well, helps us to live better our life towards our relationship with God and towards our brothers and sisters. But we shouldn't be scrambling by all means to get the material things because with it, without it, before God, we are complete. We just have to have a humble disposition of our heart. Whether we have money or not, whether we have possessions or not, what is important is the heart. Is it a good heart? Is it a generous heart? Is it a simple heart? Is it a humble heart? When the heart is humble, good, generous, simple, then whether it has anything or it doesn't have anything, it will rest well with God and will use everything that it has, however small it is or big it is, to share it with the brothers and sisters in whose, who are also the image and likeness of God. So it will be like sharing with God through helping our brothers and sisters the little that we have or the much we have so that blessings can expand to others as well. Dear friends, it's good to inquire about our motivation. Why do we follow the Lord Jesus? Some people follow the Lord because this is how they were brought up and raised when they, right from their childhood. So we, they just follow the Lord just like that. Others follow the Lord because they feel better to do so, to follow the Lord. And others just follow the Lord because they think that it will make their life better in different ways following the Lord. But what is the ideal motivation in following the Lord? The real motivation of following the Lord is very simple. We follow the Lord because he is the son of God and savior of the world. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is our friend. He is our Lord and master. And we are blessed to be with him in one family. We follow him in order to make our family good and beautiful with the Lord who gives us strength and who provides for us. Jesus came into the world to call us back to him and back to the Father and invites us to be in union, in communion, in love, in peace, in harmony with him and with each other. So we will follow the Lord simply because it's the right thing to do because the Lord is the master, the giver of life. He is life himself. So when we don't know how to face life, he is the one to fill us with his life so that we can share this life with our brothers and sisters and make them happy already in this world and in the world to come. We will not follow the Lord because of the so-called benefits. Love in its purest form does not love the other because of what we get from it or from the other. Rather, pure love is the wishing well of the other, is a gift that is offered to the other, wishing the best for the other, regardless of whether I know the other or not. Just by the fact that the other is a human being, the person is worthy of my love. That's a pure love that loves without conditions, without looking at the defects, without looking at the benefits, without look. It just simply loves and wishes the best for the other without looking at color, race, status, language, culture. All these are put aside. We just love the other by the fact that he's a human being created in the image and likeness of God. And we do that without calculating, without measuring, so that we just make the life beautiful for all the people whom we meet on our journey of life. That is our mission, to love as Jesus loves all as they are. 
Jesus is worthy of our love and worship simply because of who he is, the Son of God, the Master, God himself. Jesus loves us as we are so that we can also love him the way he is. God, our father, father, brother, and sister, and the one who reveals the presence of God himself among us. May the Lord help us to follow him every day in our joys and good times, but also in our challenges, in the simple lifestyle, in the simple way of living, in the total offering of ourselves to God by total offering of ourselves to our brothers and sisters, loving them as they are and embracing all, journeying together, walking and working together with the Lord and with each other towards God our Father, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessings from Jerusalem, dear friends.